This pattern is the green scud. I've got a size 14 scud hook here in my vise and I'm going to add some 0.015 lead. Probably maybe 10 or so wraps of the lead here and then I'm just going to go ahead and wiggle that back and forth and break off the lead there and then I'll do the same thing on the back end here. We'll just wiggle that until it breaks off. Once I have that broken off, I'll just make sure that these are kind of squeezed together tight. And then I want to have some space up here behind the eye of the hook, so I'm going to kind of pull that back just a little bit. And being a green scud, I'm going to tie this up with some olive thread. I'm going to start that in front of those lead wraps, and I'm going to just take that thread, the butt end, the tag end of that thread, pull it back. And I'm going to take wraps over the top of that and over the lead until I reach the back end of the lead. We'll take a few wraps there. And what that's going to do is it's going to help us secure that lead down. So it doesn't shift around on us. We've got it right where we want it. And once I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and take my thread back down into the deep into the bend of the hook where I want the back end of the scud to start. Then I'm just going to work my way back up. Probably add a few thread wraps, extra thread wraps here at the back to start building a transition to that lead. The lead's going to help us get this down in the water a little bit faster, kind of down at the bottom where the scuds hang out. Um, and the lead also gives us that kind of hump that will help us generate sort of the football shape that we expect with the scud. Then I'm going to go ahead and lay a thread base up behind the eye of the hook come back up, take some wraps again right in front of the lead to again build it, build up that transition. And I'm just going to go ahead and start working my way back to where we're going to tie in our first material. So we're going to use a mallard flank feather here that's been dyed olive we're going to use fibers from it to do our antenna and do some work here at the back i've already got probably about eight or nine fibers here i'm just going to hold those up against the hook here at the back and we'll get a wrap in to get those in place and then i can after i've got a wrap or two in place i can look at them and see what i think of their length and i don't mind these being a little bit long i may shorten them up a little bit by pulling on this end And then I'll just go ahead and take a few wraps down. Kind of securing those in place. While trying to be careful not to pull them around the shank of the hook. And I'll go ahead and bring my thread back up right to where those fibers meet the back end of our thread wraps. We'll cut that off, secure those butt ends down. And then I'm just going to go ahead and travel on up to the front and we're going to do something similar there. So once again I've got several of those fibers and we want those to hang over the eye of the hook. Did a wrap or two on those as well. After those two wraps we'll just go ahead and make some adjustments. Just making sure that they're centered. want them to hang over but not too far. That's about a good length for me. I'm trying to take some careful wraps here just so I don't pull those fibers around the back end of the hook. Once I've got those positioned where I want, I'm going to wrap back to the front end of our thread wraps. And we'll go ahead and clip out the balance. With that, I'm just going to go ahead and travel back over the top. You can see we're starting to generate that football shape that we want with a scud. For ribbing, I'm going to just use a piece of small silver wire. I'm going to secure that on the lens side of the hook. I'm going to pull it back for length. 
let's take a couple of wraps back to where we want the scud to start. I'm going to take a piece of olive scud back and you can see I've, I've kind of tapered the front end of it. That'll help me catch that in but also have less material back where the scud's going to start. I want this over the very center because we're going to pull this up over the center top. After I've got a couple of wraps in, kind of holding it in place, I can stretch it a little bit. As we go back down deep into the bend here. That's where the body of our scud is going to begin. For dubbing, I'm just going to use some Whitlock's um, blend and dubbing. I'm using a very light, almost lime colored dubbing. I'm just going to finger dub this up right onto my thread. And take a few wraps to get us back down to right where this starts. I want to make sure I get one full wrap right around the back end there. And we're just going to work our way up. over the top here. This is a size 14 hook which I know I already mentioned but being a, get a little bit bigger we're going to need to go back for a little bit of extra dubbing here. Tighten that dubbing as we move forward. Feast or famine. I've got too much now, so I'll go ahead and kind of pull some of that that's left. I'll take a wrap or two to secure the dubbing in place. I'll just turn my hook here in my vise. Clip off that extra dubbing there. And I'll just go ahead and clean that up a little bit. We're going to have a bit of a head on here that will blend in with the scud body. Now before I pull over the scud back and do our ribbing, I'm going to go ahead and take a dubbing brush. And I want to brush this dubbing out because that those fibers that are going to end up sticking out here are going to be our legs. So I'm brushing down towards the hook point Once I have those fibers there like that, I'm going to go ahead and just pull with my fingers down. Because I left that scud back a little bit short, I'm going to grab it by my hackle pliers just barely. It'll allow me to kind of pull it right up over the eye here. Got my legs kind of swept down. I take a few wraps, make sure that's nice and tight. Go ahead and release that from our hackle pliers. I'm going to just take a few more wraps, moving back into towards the hook bend. And I come on in with my scissors and we'll go ahead and clip off that little bit of balance. I'm going to take my silver wire, get that first wrap around the back, I'm going to pull it too tight until I get it pulling towards myself and then I'm going to pull it a little bit tighter. We'll just take open wraps of our silver wire. Just kind of 
pulling it tight with each wrap. I prefer to pull it tight when it's pulling towards myself. That just helps the scud back from having a tendency to want to slide in the direction that I'm wrapping. And if those legs start traveling with you, you can kind of sweep them down with your fingers. You're going to capture a few of them. We'll just trim them out. And just kind of continue up, getting that nice ribbed body that we want with our scud. right up to where our thread wraps are. I'm going to just take a wrap or two over the top of that wire as well as underneath of it. I'll just go ahead and we'll helicopter it. Just put some tension on it, wiggle it around. It'll break right off for you. So we've got that whip finished. I'm going to turn this upside down and then cut those legs just right at right below the hook point here so just get rid of some of those longer ones that are just excessive so you end up with nice legs and we're going to go ahead and grab some thin UV resin I'm just going to coat the top here just a little bit more make sure that comes around the sides a little bit then I'll clean that resin off my bodkin here and just make sure I don't have too much excess. And then I can just go ahead and hit it with a UV light and cure the resin. And that's the green scud. Uh, great pattern. You can match it for the colors of scuds in your area. Uh, I, I happen to have this color of scud in my area, so this one knocks him dead. Um, very quick and easy pattern to tie, not overly complicated. Throw yourself a hook in your vise and give this one a shot.